it's been a while since we visited with uh, Rusty Trombone, uh, a.k.a. Uh, Russell Brand, a.k.a. Hippie Alex Jones. Um, and, you know, he's he's proed up in the last eight months. You know, he went he took his little fiefdom on YouTube and his and, and moved most of them over to Rumble. Under contract, it seems. I think he has to post something. He has to post his live stream there, and then he can still post videos here, and they split rev on that kind of stuff. But it was basically like Rumble writing him a contract to move over there and threw some millions his way, and that's what he did. So as, a, you know, as millionaire Marxists go, it's him and Jimmy Dore vying for the top of the shit pile in that regard. And in this particular case, I want you to... This is... We all watched the Wagner attempted coup in Russia and it was abundantly clear what was going on. Like it's not, it's not a fucking mystery. It is not th th that there's some sort of bizarre behind the scenes machination going on is ludicrous because all the players involved in it were speaking earnestly up until the point where they had to make a deal with each other, and then they have mainly, especially looking at Putin. So unless you believe he's a NATO puppet put there to force Russia to attack Ukraine so that Ukraine could be in NATO to push back on Russia so they could eventually take it over, and it was part of a 35-year plan to get him in power, which I honestly, even he doesn't smoke shit that powerful, I don't think. Um, unless you believe that, um, you, you just, you, there's a lot of this you have, you can and must, if you have any decency at all, take at face value that, that Putin, when he was pissed about what, what Brokosian was doing, that was genuine. And then when he walked it back, that was him sticking his head up his ass and, you know, and whimpering into a corner for real. That wasn't part of some like fifth level chess that they had coordinated to try and we need to find some way to get the Wagner groups into Belarus so that they can attack Kiev and we can't just send them there we have to punch ourselves in the dick for a month first like it's nonsense anyways so check this out this is him uh giving a rundown on the basis of the coup now I'm not going to do all of this because you can watch it if you want to um but watch watch how watch who he thinks is the impetus for all of it and who he goes to defend and then there's a moment i want to show you where he tries to defend he catches himself defending the wrong person yeah i try wolf tree well, well don't worry we'll, we'll coo, coo. what does it do it cheers up nato and it distracts you okay so uh uh, adorable, uh, childish opening, um, and trying way too fucking hard and, and infantile, I would argue. Now, remember that when he says something in a moment. Hello there, you 6.4 million awakening wonders. Thank you for joining us on this voyage, the truth blah, and freedom blah, blah, that yeah, we yeah, the yeah. coup. But what kind of coup was it? Who benefits from this coup? Who is Progotion? Another new word we've got to learn now. By the way, another new word we have to learn now. First of all, progosian has been around and the Wagner Group has been a, a, a tactical part of this for a long fucking time. And this asshole has had on uh, everybody short of Scott Ritter. He may have had Ritter on. I don't know. But he ha he's had people on here defending, you know, uh, Russia the whole way, talking about how Ukraine's full of Nazis and all this stuff. And he, and, and he doesn't know... Prigozhin's the head of the Wagner group. Wagner's named after Hitler's favorite composer, the uh, Dukin or whatever, the second in, in command who was leading the forces that were going to Moscow. That's uh, Prigozhin's second in the Wagner group, has two Nazi uh, tattoos, collar tattoos on his fucking collarbones, and a, uh, a Nazi um, eagle with the symbol right here on his chest. But, you know, Prigozhin, no, who's heard that word before? And what's really behind this what's really behind story it. is it to do with the failing ukrainian counteroffensive the squandered ukrainian lives the better
if it is, then Prigozhin is helping them. And if it, but, the American okay. imperialist interest currently playing out. I How are current? Okay. First of all, uh, American imperialist in interests. Do we still control Japan, their economy, their, uh, their technology, their existence? No. How about Germany? I mean, we definitely negotiate with them and we, we have tit for tat trade stuff with them, but do we, do we sock puppet like a true imperial power? Do we control them now? What about, um, South Korea? The, the, the U.S. controls South Korea and what it wants to do. So, no. So, what, what is the belief system that says that that's the plan we have for Ukraine? And again, eight years, eight, eight years before Russia, you know, attacks to stop NATO is the last time anyone discussed the potential in future at some point, perhaps Ukraine joining NATO. And this was after Russia had just attacked them out of the fucking blue the first time. I don't know, but by the end of this video- Yes, of course you don't know. That's that's why you're going to do a an 11 minute video on it. This is, it, I, I take it back. He's not the hippie Alex Jones. He's the hippie Glenn Beck. The video will be a lot closer to the truth. No, you won't. All right, spoiler alert. Together. Let's have a look at how the mainstream media are peddling this new set of NATO benefiting narratives. Okay. <laughs> the NATO benefiting Narratives. You are about to see, this is his example, you are about to see the news touting some sort of NATO line. Here it comes. Breaking news. A Russian mercenary chief with thousands of troops ordering an armed rebellion and march on Moscow only to abruptly call it off. Yevgeny Prigozhin of the Wagner Group saying he halted the march to avoid shedding Russian blood. Do you know what a war- Okay. It, was there a narrative in any of that before this dipshit starts condescending to everyone? Does it, was there any narrative in that at all? That is that is as concise a description of what happened as you could possibly make in the short order. That's exactly what happened. There's, there's no opinion in that at all. Or is it's weird, isn't it, that he's a Russian mercenary? He no, it isn't weird. That's actually what he fucking is. Now, Russell is going to get very close right now to stepping in it. Now, since this happened, Vladimir Putin did something extraordinarily stupid. He came out and said that the Wagner Group is completely funded by the Russian government. Unlike Blackwater or something or something the U.S. contracts with others, this is, he's saying hand in glove. Every dime that went to the Wagner Group comes from us. We are the driving force behind it, which the, there's a real problem with that in a lot of areas because there are countries, especially in Africa, who are going after the Wagner Group for war crimes. And now the deeper pockets of the Russian government are officially on the line because Putin said, no, they're us. Wagner and the Russian army are the same, which was stupid as well. But, but it's true. I mean, it's definitely true. But he was at least smart enough not to fucking say it for a long time, in theory. Works for a private branch of the Russian military. It's not mother to raise. Okay, first of all, private branch of the Russian military. No. There's no such thing as a private branch. He's just, it's a word game. And he goes, he goes, he's not mother Teresa. And I, I, again, I don't think the guy's defending him. He's just describing him as yeah, he is. Is it? It's not Princess Diana. Not Nelson Mandela. He's a Russian mercenary. Ah! He actually is, though. Why is that? Again, look at this dickhead. What is the news narrative here? Where is this? Like, this is what the mainstream media is trying to scare you with. No, he's, that's just how you describe it. You fucking moron. An extraordinary day of events and chaos. This dramatic video circulating online. Earlier today, an angry Vladimir Putin vowing to crush the rebellion. Is this children's news? When I was a kid, they used to be a Okay, here we go. Pay attention to this part right here. 
and angry Vladimir Putin vowing to crush the rebellion. Is this children's news? When I was a kid, there used to be a show called News Round. It was news for children, but now actual news is like news for children. Putin is angry because someone tried to do a coup at him. Poo on that coup. Now it's Big Bird with the weather. Oh, there's water coming from the sky. We're adults. In a t okay, he's mad. We're adults, he says. Keep, keep in mind, where is this? 141. We're adults. This is news is for children now, right? Let's go back to the beginning. Who? Who? What does it do? It cheers up NATO and it distracts you. We're adults. Right. So, get my point? Like, it, the, the apparently his complaints are based on some sort of idea that he is, I, I mean, I I honestly don't know how. Oops, hold on. Sorry, there you go. Um, I, I don't know how you can be this blind to your own bullshit, but it's kind of amazing. Okay, so here we go. ...advised address to the nation, calling it treason and a stab in the back. <laughs> like the first one, that's actually a legalistic term. Second one, it's emotional rhetoric, isn't it? Firstly, you are here for the crime of treason. Plus, you are no longer my best friend. Make up, make up, you bet we break up! See, remember, this is news for children. What the fuck do you think he's doing? You get my point. High tension. The whole time, and the weird thing is it gets worse. Through this whole frigging video, he gets more childish and more like, like silly voice. Da, da, da. And I, again, there's nothing wrong with doing that, but the idea that somehow the news clip he's showing with this baseline narrative, somehow like them manipulating people, and he, all right. Turn of you get the point. It's fucking weird. Events culminated today with those rebel forces marching toward Moscow. At this stage of the war, can we at least agree on the pronunciation of Moscow? Toward Moscow, but over the past few hours. Um, I don't know. You just learned the name Prigozhin, so fuck off. Hours, the mercenary leader, Yevgeny Prigozhin. He looks pretty badass. I don't mean he's going to be any bad. Oh, that's right. He also calls Prigozhin a badass repeatedly. He calls him a badass geezer. Which I, you know, uh, he uses terms of endearment for Trump all the time. Like, he's always, you gotta give it to Trump. No, you don't. N no, n no, you don't. Free health care for illegal... Ill 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 the idea that he is somehow a master orator. Michigan gave us Motang. And this asshole is like, you gotta give it to him. He can, you know, he can say what he means and mean what he says. Illegal... Ill 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 we're going to be appointing very pro-crime judges. I mean, honestly. Better. You know, like when sort of a coup gets backed by Western interests and there's some sort of insurgency that we stir in a sovereign nation of some kind. You sort of <laughs> this, the, the, that we stir in the, you mean the, the democratic forces that are in there who would otherwise be crushed. Also, uh, Fuck off till you get rid of your monarchy. We fought a war with your goddamn country. So, and and you know what the French did? You know what the French fucking did? The French backed the insurgency in the United States. And that's why there's a fucking Fayette County in almost every state in the well, Union. Who's this guy you're backing? We did it, Britain, with like Pinochet. He was a right bastard. Okay, first of all, Pinochet was the actual leader of that country. And yes, the Brits backed him in that regard. And he was awful. That's not what this is. He's not. This isn't a Pinochet. This guy is fucking. He's a hitman. All right. I I I just don't know if he's capable now of fucking analogy. Now his turn around after reaching a deal with the leader of Belarus to seek shelter there. In turn, the Russian government promised it would drop all criminal charges against him and his fighters will not be prosecuted. What led Prigozhin to launch this coup? And this is uh. Uh, WSW, like World Socialist, World something, or whatever. Uh, they, they write this paper. The failed coup in Russia, causes and consequences. So this is where he gets his primary narrative from for this thing. So he, it, just like Jimmy Dore, he just goes and finds whatever news source will give him the most kind of like, I, I don't know, green meat, if, it, if not red meat, the green meat version of events so that he can read this as if it's fact. Okay. First, it's evident these escalating conflicts with the Russian state and military apparatus came to a head. The coup attempt was preceded by Prigozhin's vitriolic denunciations of the Russian defense minister, whom he accused of not waging the war aggressively enough. And that's just materially true. Watch out, Russell.
Well, he's got an angle on this war, isn't he, this geezer? This war, yes, this terrible war. No, this war, not aggressive enough. Nyet! Patrick Beatties. Okay, and he does the nyet thing a bunch too. Like, he's he's turning this guy into like a, a mad dad character. Um, not recognizing that this is, Prigozhin is the guy who, um, when they have people who try to um, run from the front lines, many of whom, by the way, who don't have any ammunition in their rifles and are running because what the fuck are they supposed to do? Hold a grenade and run towards the Ukrainians and die in a bloody explosion? I guess, according to Russell, that's what they should be doing because he is actively calling, the, you know, Prigozhin a, uh, you know, a badass geezer who um, tapes those men tapes those men to a stump tapes their head to a stump using clear tape so they can see and then bashes their head in with a sledgehammer badass geezer is what he's uh, he's like a tough guy you know what i mean he's a regular Clint Eastwood this fella Son, did you enjoy sports baby by the way the news is for children and thank god there are adults <laughs> Yeet. They like this drawing bad. It's of a bomb. They edited other stuff out. He did probably eight more of these. These are the best ones. <laughs> Yeet. It's been reported that funding for Wagner has to be substantially cut. Huh? Bomb. Yeet. Is was was to be substantially cut. Now that is because. This is an impetus for the attack itself. Look how Russell reads. It's been reported that funding for Wagner has to be substantially cut. Has to be. I'm not telling him. We're cutting the funding for Wagner. Yeet! Earlier this month, Prigozhin refused to accept Putin's demands that Wagner be placed under the control of army leadership. So he's a pretty serious badass, this geezer. Pu yeah, he's a pretty serious badass. This geezer, um... I, I can only presume that that is uh, Russell, che you know, cheering on the Butcher rape squads because the Wagner guys, and and again, like I I try not to take this dickhead too seriously, but um um, oops, hold on. For all of his uh yeah. <laughs> well, let's just go to here. Let's go to the uh, Agbado uh, massacre. On 16th to 17th of January 2022, at least 65 civilians were killed by Russian mercenaries from the Wagner Group who were report, uh, supported by armed forces in the villages of Agbado and Yanga near Bria in the Central African Republic, C-A-R, during an operation against rebels from the Coalition of Patriots for Change. You know, that's the insurgents that american -y people do, the Coalition for Patriots of Change, which we weren't specifically backing. They were just out there on their own. Um, shortly before noon, heavily armed Wagner group mercenaries left Bria towards Ndele and, uh, Ndele and arrived in the village of Agboda, uh, Bado, uh, situated 75 kilometers from Bria. Upon their arrival, the local population started panicking. The mercenaries started shooting indiscriminately into the crowd. They also burned a dozen homes. This guy's a fucking, he's a tough guy geezer, isn't he? Isn't he a badass geezer? Right, Russell? He's just a badass geezer, this guy. He's a geezer. He's just fucking hanging. The guy it, specifically ordering this attack. This is, by the way, right before Ukraine. They also burned a dozen homes. Rebels from the Union for Peace in the Central African Republic, who were present in nearby areas, attacked them, injuring four mercenaries. Then Wagner Group moved towards uh, Yanga Village, 70 kilometers. Uh, two Wagner Group members later died due to their injuries. Their bodies were transported to Bangui. Um, they established a base in Agbado afterwards and were reportedly preventing anybody from entering or leaving the village. While according to other sources, only wounded women and children were allowed to leave the villages. After the event, Wagner Group mercenaries laid down landmines to prevent peacekeepers from reaching the village. As of late February, aid workers were still unable to access the area. At least 65 people were killed. Some of them were shot by bullets from heavy weapons during the attack, while others were taken to the bush and summarily executed. Among the victims were women and at least two children. Some wounded people were able to reach Bria. According to survivors, there were many bodies in the forest. Local fishermen reported to have fished out at least 14 bodies, including women and children, from the Lakoto River. 756 people were forced to flee to uh, Bongo in uh, the uh, same prefecture. Houses were looted, set ablaze during the clashes. 
UN peacekeepers reportedly deployed humanitarian aid team to the area to assess the situation, investigate the killings. Government of Central African Republic officially denied any civilian casualties during the operation. Um, but he's a tough old geezer. Isn't he a tough old geezer? He's a badass geezer, isn't he, Russell? Yeah, can't you? So in tells him we're taking control of that. There is, after all, a great big war going on. He says, Neat. What I'm interested in is whether or not NATO are involved with or benefit from this and how the media will... Okay, first of all, Involved with, no. Benefit from, sure. Because if you're, again, napping on a beach in Florida and an alligator's about to attack you and a, a panther jumps on it and they start fighting amongst themselves, you benefit from it. As long as you don't wait around to see who wins and, and who's still hungry. We'll use it particularly contrasted with the terrible, egregious bloodbath that is the Ukrainian counteroffensive, which the media... The, the terrible bloodbath. It's a war. That's the actual war part. That's that's actually just ground war. That's because a country is fighting to gain back their territory. Period. End of fucking story. Why is it a bloodbath? But but on the way in, it wasn't, Russell. Peter have been telling us for some time it was going to be when the dynamics of the war altered. Everyone was going to be okay and we'd all be home for Christmas. The way that no, no one says that. That's again. This is a this is a um. It's like an, 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 a lie through, um, I, I guess, um, through exaggeration. Simply like an, a lie through exaggeration. Say, I'll, I'll take what you said and say you said far more than you did. And therefore, because you, did, whether, you didn't say that, but because it didn't reach the level that I said it, uh, you, you were lying, not me misrepresenting what you said. Wars have been reported on since there've been global wars, really. There is evidence that the military was fed up with Putin's longtime patronage of Prigozhin. His operations in Ukraine, while useful to a limited extent, also- His operations in Ukraine, while useful to a limited extent, that operate like Bucha. Yeah, like rape squads, like, yeah. Yeah. Like torture, lots of it. So interfered with the professional conduct of the war by trained officers. Prigozhin, one can safely surmise, attempted the coup in order to preempt actions against him. Okay, so it was a preemptive strike. It's not like Prigozhin's an idealist. We have to end this war. He's an idealist. Who's, we have to make this war more aggressive. Dad, I got a swimming certificate. Again, uh, the mainstream media is manipulative and childlike. Get it school today. Yet. Second, it will be the height of political cluelessness to believe that NATO has been a passive bystander in the events of the last 24 to 36 hours. I yeah, again, why is why are the people laying on the beach dragged into their interest in whether the panther and the alligator kill each other? They're you know, they're picking up their towels and running <laughs> or they're trying to get in a position where they can protect their families or themselves from the panther or the tiger or the, the alligator, whichever one happens to win. But that and that's that is a sign of manipulation. Okay, so let's see how much political cluelessness there will be in the mainstream reporting of this event. It has certainly been following the escalating. <laughs> let's see how the, the mainstream media report, how clueless, clueless they are. Let's go back to what we were reading before. War of words between Prigozhin and the Russian military with extreme care. And it could be assumed that it made contact with him. There is no other credit. No. Also, there's no other credible explanation for the pro-NATO justification made by Prigozhin upon launching the coup. It wasn't pro-NATO. He just called bullshit on Putin's justifications for the war. It wasn't pro-NATO. It turns out it, it is that NATO was right. That the, that the pro-NATO group was like, these fuckers just attacked because they wanted to. Credible explanation for the pro-NATO justification made by Prigozhin upon launching the coup. Now or... It's just simply him telling the truth. No, there can't be. This dude, who's got his own private army, who thinks the war isn't aggressive enough, in spite of all the death and bloodshed and horror, if he sort of goes, and also props to NATO, big shout out to- Yeah, he didn't do that, dumb hat. It, like, it, uh, like oh God. this dumbass. I, mm. okay. He hasn't seen the video of what Prigozhin said or Putin said. He's, he's saying, he's going off this article, whatever the fuck, or whatever his, his little producer, the, the creepy dude who runs this show, um, he's going on what that guy has told him about it. But he is not, we've all watched it. We all saw Prigozhin's statement or read it 
Um, and we've all seen Putin's response both when it was happening and his post speech. NATO, just for the great work you're doing, impeding. Yeah, he actually thinks Prigozhin said pro NATO stuff. He actually thinks he invoked NATO. Like, that's how stupid this fucking guy is. On Russia borders, presumably some kind of communication has taken place. Let me know in the comments what you think. Prigozhin. Yeah, and by the way, this is just uh, farming for for likes. That's uh, th he does this like four times in this fucking video. Okay, I'm gonna skip to um, the end of this in a second because we're gonna go through something that I haven't seen again. His NATO but... contacts would have had good reason to demand that he act now. The... Prigozhin's NATO contacts would have uh, uh, there. He has none. The coup has been launched less than three weeks into the NATO-backed counteroffensive by Ukraine. So the whole thing is that Wagner was just pretending to rape and murder and kill and take Bakhmut over and over and over again because they were secretly working for NATO, killing Ukrainians, because eventually they would turn around and, what, do a half-assed run at Moscow? That's the plan. The coup has been launched less than three weeks into the NATO-backed counteroffensive by Ukraine. No, the full counteroffensive has not happened not according to Zelensky not according to any of the other western powers that are supplying him with stuff nobody's even saying that the idea is that the date came and they started moving they started gaining territory but not that the full counteroffensive is happening Ukraine, having cost tens of billions of dollars to prepare your money yes uh also um how many billions of dollars were used to prepare uh for you know Russia hunkering into those areas digging trenches and putting mines out Russell, your money. So far proven to be a debacle with thousands of Ukrainian soldiers dying each day. That's Ukrainian human beings. And only a few... I'm sorry, are the Russians dying, not human beings? Maybe we finally agree on something. I kid. Villages seized. It's gone to the point where the US media describes as a massive triumph the ability of Ukrainian forces to capture and hold for a few hours a tiny, nondescript village. By the way, this is, uh, he's, I mean, these are straight up Kremlin talking points. Um, these are, these are Ukrainian towns that have been held by the Russians since 2014. This isn't territory taken since last year. This is, this is stuff that was taken years ago. They have, they have broached that line. The main news again, we have got this village. Again, childish. Can you describe it? No. What I, I, honest to God, what the fuck? Oh, in just over two weeks, NATO will be holding a major summit in- Okay, he gets to this. Now, let me go ahead to this part. Uh, and I calculate, okay. Um, the Biden administration and its NATO allies calculated that a coup attempt, even if not successful, would destabilize the regime and undermine its military operation. So the, these assholes are just, uh, that he's reading from, are just selling the idea that, that Prigozhin now works for NATO. I, I guess he's going to go work for NATO inside Belarus. I, I, what's he going to do? Topple Lukashenko, and that's how th this is fifth. Which side is playing fifth dimension chess? Now, let's get. In any case, the coup attempt was shifted the media narrative away from the failed Ukrainian. To pretty, like, give me comments. He does that shit. And then, and the pro NATO opposition with the Russian oligarchy makes the coup. To, okay, sorry. The immediate response of high level representatives of U.S. imperialism, the Zelensky regime, and the pro NATO opposition within the Russian oligarchy makes clear that the coup did not come as a surprise. Well, he was leading up to it for a long time. It was a surprise when he did it. Not that he did it. Um, and then, okay, uh, Alexander Vindman, this is weird too, who has been a key figure in the U.S. preparations for war against Russia for over a decade. Uh, like, what the fuck? And and he he doesn't know who the fuck Vindman is. <laughs> all right, anyways, weird. Uh, like, for all those who have been wondering how the war in Ukraine is going, it's going insurrection in Russia well. And that's him making a joke. So they they find Vinman goes, writes a fuck you Russia tweet. His family's from there. Christmas but, tweeted on Friday evening for all of those that have been wondering. And, wa and watch Russell's response. Wondering how the war in Ukraine is going. It's going insurrection in Russia well. They use that word insurrection pretty glibly. And that's not a good catchphrase. This chicken, it's insurrection in Russia. Like yeah, it's uh, like, that's the joke. Is Kurt Metzger writing for Russell now too? Good. Oh, sorry. It's fucking so it didn't lame. stay insurrection in Russia well for that long, did it? Like a day. Later into the coup, he suggested that NATO use the opportunity to extend... A coup. Not a coup, it's not chicken. Anyway. And its air defenses 100 miles into Ukraine. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky... Hello, Volodymyr. ...also expressed support for Prigozhin's coup attempt. Prigozhin's coup attempt exposes, above all, the bankruptcy of... 
Okay, this is the part where Russia, uh, or Russell, Russia, Russell, both of them, who cares, one and the same, walk into a rake. Because this is the socialists and the socialist group that he's reading, this WSWS group, and him being this like millionaire Marxist idea, and then he wants to tear down the whole system and capitalism terrible, blah, blah, blah. Even though he's a multimillionaire, right? And it, and everything he makes on here is he's not doing this for free. He's not like, hello, you 6.4 million charity givers who I'm giving all the money I get from this to somewhere else because I've got plenty. <laughs> no. Prigozhin's coup attempt exposes above all the bankruptcy of the Putin regime itself, out of which Prigozhin himself emerged. He is a Frankenstein monster created by Putin over whom the Russian president lost control. Okay, this is a fairly normal idea, but watch of this. Of the Putin regime itself, out of which Prigozhin himself emerged. He is a Frankenstein monster created by Putin and over whom the Russian president lost control. And at some point, presumably if this coup is successful or if it's, you know, the first of a few coups, we will see our media trying to frame him as some brilliant new alternative. Like when so- No, nobody is. As a matter of fact, the opposite was happening. Everybody's going, this is, that's what the Frankenstein references have been about. Good Lord. Boris Yeltsin was in charge. He was like some cuddly, shaven Father Christmas. Too well, well, compared to Vladimir Putin or, or uh, like Khrushchev or people like that, he was. He was a drunk. Learned he was a drunk nutcase. All of these. Yeah. But you know what he didn't ever do? He didn't duct tape anybody's fucking head to a stump and smash it with a sledgehammer. There's a, there's a slight difference. I mean, lesser of two evils. Figures ultimately operate within the same communal space, have the same interests, have the same allies. No one's gonna run. No. Boris Yeltsin and Prigozhin are, are relatively incomparable except for the fact that they were both born in Russia. Merge out of a mercenary army and like go, our priority is the children. I <laughs> is like gonna be some other bastard. For decades, Putin and Prigozhin were close allies. Until recently, the Wagner Group, which originated within the Russian military intelligence, GRU, enjoyed the evident patronage of Putin and other powerful forces within the state apparatus. Prigozhin, a fascistic warlord billionaire and convicted criminal. And By the way, uh, when, when the, if you'll notice, when the mainstream media calls him that, calls, uh, calls him a, a Russian mercenary. Oh my God, the pearl clutching or the bead clutching. And then this, his own little paper that he's reading from, his script from whatever source, uh, watch this. And now please welcome our new ally, a fascistic warlord and billionaire convicted criminal. Should we? Okay, so now we're NATO and, and everybody who's supporting Ukraine is on the hook for this fucker because their description of him is apt and normal, but somebody calling him a Russian mercenary, which is exactly materially, factually what he is, is somehow psychologically manipulated. Keep clapping this. Yeah, keep clapping. It's NATO approved. Rep Again, no it isn't. What the fuck? Represents a substantial faction of the Russian oligarchy that opposes the war solely because Putin's effort to protect the capitalist classes and states' privileged access to the country's vast resources has cost them dearly. Putin has sought to balance. N notice there wasn't a. He didn't stop and comment when he got to the whole Putin's protecting the capitalist part. He's just blazing right past Between that. Between these factions and this attempt to reconcile opposing oligarchic interests has determined the conduct of what he still calls a special military operation. From the beginning, the Kremlin's po Yep, blazing right past that too. Any of the bad news just to, now he's just, now he's an audiobook. Policy in Ukraine has been based on the hope that limited military pressure could persuade the Western imperialist powers to accept the legitimate security interests of the Russian capitalist regime. The, and, and I love how legitimate is in quotes. And obviously, uh, they've, they've stuck their flag in the idea that Russia is a capitalist structure and they need to go back to being the USSR. And that's their dig. Putin has persisted with this aim, even as all of his red lines have been crossed. The latest red line being the attempt to overthrow him. How Putin responds remains... Still nothing. Not, notice how the editorializing dries the fuck up when all of a sudden this goes against... Uh, like his entire narrative. To be seen whether through a military escalation or with significant concessions to reach some sort of accommodation. The imperialist powers, however. Yep, just blazing right the fuck through it. Like, he just keeps doing it too. Just keep, just, I can keep reading until he gets to here. The where. entire former Soviet Union under their direct control. And this is, okay, by the way, the imperialist powers, this is when he finally stops. 
however are not interested in compromise their ultimate goal is the is the carve up of russia so as to bring the vast resources of the entire former soviet union under their direct control okay first of all why um first of all uh georgia chechnya would like a word ukraine also that russia has been trying to regain what was under the ussr for their own the united states hasn't sought control over those spaces in the last since 91 at all it, it it's super weird like this is an odd assertion and it's a blind one because again it's it, it you have to operate on the idea that the chechens and the 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 ukraine the the ukrainians in the donbass and the georgians fucking had it coming Right, Russell? Oh, that's a pretty heavy aim, isn't it? That sounds a lot different from we must help and protect Ukrainian people from these criminal aggressors. And again, I'm first of all, they're saying that NATO isn't saying this isn't NATO's description of what it's doing. This isn't the Western powers describing what they want to do. This isn't even a fucking ally of them describing. This is a direct someone that sees themselves in direct opposition to Western society in general the wws wsws.org these guys view themselves as antithetical to western what they see as neoliberal capitalism and the function of europe and the united states and canada they're the big evil in this and the only thing that will save the earth is if russia goes back to being like china is right now which is just whatever but he's acting like this is nato's word I, honest to God. Soviet Union under their direct control. That's a pretty heavy aim, isn't it? That sounds a lot different from we must help and protect Ukrainian people from these criminal aggressors. And again, I'm not disputing criminal aggressors, but I am disputing humanitarian just because I don't think since the Second World War there's been anything like that has happened. Do you? No, I don't think so. Whatever. Which is why we stayed out of Rwanda. Um, also, uh, I guess the uh, people in Kosovo probably have a moment of disagreement. So, yeah. Ultimately, both Putin and Prigozhin represent the same social class, an oligarchy steeped in criminality and hatred of the working class. <laughs> hatred of the working class. So basically the same as American democracy then. Which one of these total bastards? Fuck off. This, this, all right, here's, here's how you do it. This is, I'll tell you what, what's the difference? There's no, he's making the, these are the same. They're exactly the same. Okay, then tell you what, pack your show up and do your show live from Russia for a month. It's easy. Do it. Do your whole, live there for a month, walk around, eat at, eat at restaurants, go to shops. Show up for your show, put it together, broadcast it from there for a month. And then tell me. Then come back and tell us all. You don't have to stay. I'm not saying get the fuck out. I'm saying go over there and do it. And then come back and and then make this TikTok comparison Bastards, again. Shall it be? The interests of the Russian and Ukrainian oligarchies preclude any progressive form of defense of the interests of the mass of the working people against the predatory policies of imperialism. <laughs> right. Which... Uh, Again, you you can't colonize yourself, so I guess Ukraine's off the hook. And Russian imperialism is specifically what's going on in the Donbass and in the east of Ukraine and uh, Chechnya and Georgia. But I guess fuck those people. The war in Ukraine must be stopped through the independent revolutionary mobilization of the international working class. Yeah, that's what's going to happen. Yes, workers of the world unite and go fight on behalf of no one to stop everyone who's fighting on behalf of themselves. Not the NATO-backed overthrow of the Putin regime and a carve-up. First of all, no one wants to carve up Russia. They don't have anything we want. Honest to God. I, I, what, what, it, what do you fucking think we're going to carve up? What part of, what are we trying to get at, out of Russia? By the way, oil and gas was flowing out of there anyways. The cost of of the immorality of doing business with the Russians caused the Europeans and the United States to stop using oil and gas from them, even if you needed it. And we don't. Fucking hell. 
of Russia. In a sense, it's one of those stories that shows you how far off the mark we are. No, it doesn't. It does no such thing. Anyways, I, I, sorry, I got farther into that than I intended because I, I had watched that earlier. And uh, as you can see, I was uh, <clears throat> relatively aggravated. By the way, like, subscribe, give a thumbs up, support the show. Normally, I do the entirety of uh, a video. But in this case, I had, you know, I did jump around a little bit because fucking ick. But um, in comparison, this is the tack for anybody who thinks that Russell is a, a, a fair arbiter of, of genuine concern or, or information or truth or actually gives a shit on any level. Um, oh shit, this proves Trump is right? There's, the, there's a audio cassette, an MK60, 60, 60 minute uh, audio cassette. I made many uh, mixtapes for girls I liked. And then the uh, documents here and there's a sad Trump and then here him wearing a fucking prop cowboy hat from a, a dinner theater. I, I, ugh. Some sort of musical. I don't know. We'll find out. Anyways, um, that we're not doing this whole thing either because fuck this dude. But what, uh, again, this, his big complaint is the, the mainstream media is slanted and childish. Keep that in mind. I have not watched this one. I saw the early one. I have not watched this one. So here we go. The mainstream media are excited because they have audio of Trump sharing the contents of those classified boxes, which reveal that America was planning a war with Iran. Guess what they're more excited about? Um, no. That doesn't mean because we have a retaliation plan does not mean we are planning a war. As a matter of fact, it's literally the retaliation plan. But all right, let's 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 go. Hey. Hello there, you 6.4 million awakening wonders. Thanks for joining. Hello, you toddler in uh, uh, in tourist clothes. Subscribe right now. We make. No. We jump past. Yeah. Interrogates the mainstream narratives on a complex and sometimes controversial sub. No, he's not interrogating shit. like Donald Trump and the attempts to bring him down. Donald Trump, it has now been. <laughs> what? Donald Trump and the attempts to bring him down. Down. Why did somebody tell you to hit down like that? Fucking hell. Um, for the for the record, we're not trying to bring him down. Nobody concocted this shit about him conspiring with Walt Nada to steal classified documents and hide them. How again? What is this fucking short skirt narrative that that Russell and his ilk all push? Donald Trump, it has now been somewhat proven, let me know in the comments if you agree, did share the contents of those classified boxes. I mean, you can hear him doing it and admitting all the time, they shouldn't be doing this, but have a look in there, look in there. Isn't it also significant and interesting that the contents of those boxes reveal that there was a plan to go to war with Iran? What do you think? He asked for one. He's going to have a bigger impact on your life. If you're... He, he asked for one. He asked for a plan to attack Iran. As the commander in chief, they have to give him one. Whether there was one or not. Or in the UK, or can be in the UK between July the 14th and July the 17th. No, I'm not doing ads or whatever. This, this, what the fuck? Join us for our live in real life community festival event. Wim Hof. Oh my God. Hof, Vandana Shiva, Hiron Gracie, Kali Means. An attempt to bring about the kind of society that we regularly discuss here. If you can come, come. Oh, uh, you mean uh, basically a fire festival, but with like the clap? Um, there's a link in the description. Let's get on with this analysis. Let's listen for ourselves. See By the way, like, subscribe, give a thumbs up, support the show, uh, and uh, send me to Russell's retreat. I don't think I can go, actually. Never mind. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> if, Don if he does one over here, I'll fucking, uh, I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll Burning Man the shit out of that. Trump really I'll show up dressed in giant big goat horns with an electric light mask on. Did good time. share classified information. It does seem like he did. Good evening, we begin tonight with breaking news. We have obtained audio okay. recording. Okay. Because if it was an audio recorder, it's free play 
an audio recorder. I don't know. It's a free blood, but she had a run. She had a run. Of the former president talking as if he's showing a highly classified document on U.S. war plans it's against Iran. The point, once again, doesn't everyone basically think that presidents and high-ranking politicians have access to classified information? And in Yes, but not former ones. And especially not ones that live in a rental property and will show it to fucking anybody because they have a weak ego. Private communicate this information. Don't we all just basically assume that Trump revealed to us the essential nature of power? As Dave Chappelle memorably said in his SNL speech, he was the president that said, you know all the stuff you think we're doing in there? We are doing that stuff. Well, because he was. Again. Let, let's understand, and then I'm jumping out of this because we've seen this shit before. It's the same stuff all the time. Um, Donald Trump rolled back the rules of engagement on drone strikes that the Obama administration had put in place in, in theaters of war in the country. Anywhere we were helping the UN, anywhere our troops were stationed, anywhere around our bases and that kind of stuff. There was a rule of engagement to try and lower the amount of, uh, of civilian casualties to absolute zero if you absolutely can. And if you can't, to minimize them as much as possible. And and Trump rolled in and said, fuck that, and tore it up. And we had 80% uh, more civilian deaths in the first year of the Trump presidency than we had in all eight years of the Obama presidency. The reason he was like, we do all that evil shit is because he, he thought that's what you can do. Like he... He genuinely viewed it as a fucking monarchy. We're going to be appointing very pro-crime judges. He lets it slip all the time. It's, it, you know, this is like, this is like John Wayne Gacy saying, doesn't everybody have people buried under their fucking, in their crawl space, under their house? That's just what men are like. I, I even saw somebody defending Trump's thing about wanting to fuck Ivanka and all that stuff, that story that came out. A woman came out who was a big Trump fan saying, do all men think this about their daughters who are attractive? Like, no, they fucking don't. And she even said, like, do, uh, uh, fa uh, fathers of Playboy playmates have this right. Like, well, maybe that's why your daughter ended up a playmate. Not saying that's the only reason people become playmates. I'm not here to yuck anybody's yum. But perhaps that might have played a part. In some of them, maybe? Hmm? 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 Where is his asshole partner? Hmm? Anyways, so I personally, I've had enough of him today, if you don't mind.